Welcome back to the introduction to commercial feed labels. In this session, we will outline how the information presented on feed labels can help animal owners make decisions about the type and amount of feed that is best for their livestock or horses. This presentation supports Virginia Department of Education curriculum, Introduction to Animal Systems, the 8008 series developed by the Office of Career, Technical, and Adult Education Services. I'm Jim Hillary, the Agriculture and Natural Resources Extension Agent for Virginia Cooperative Extension in Loudoun County, Virginia. So now that you know what a commercial feed label looks like, you can figure out everything that you need to know about that feed and whether it's best for your animals, right? Well, there's no doubt that some of you can honestly answer yes. For others, however, the printed information has not released its secret yet. So it's still a little bit puzzling. If you are in that group, then this lesson is for you. Think of the sections of a commercial feed label as the pieces in a jigsaw puzzle. Looking at one piece alone doesn't reveal the final picture. In the same way, reading only one section, for example, the stated purpose, does not tell us everything we need to know to make informed buying decisions about commercial feeds. Consider that although the guaranteed analysis tells us which nutrients are in the bag, it's the ingredient list that tells us the source of those nutrients. It is the nutrient source that says the most about a commercial feed's quality. The major ingredients of the feed may be listed individually, like corn, soybean meal, alfalfa, or they may be represented by collective terms like grain products, plant protein products, forage products. Collective terms make it easier for a feed manufacturer to change ingredients within a group without having to change the feed label. This flexibility allows for cost savings while still meeting a specific nutrient profile. Using a collective term is not as accurate as listing ingredients individually. However, it is allowed. Ingredients are listed in descending order by their amount in a commercial feed. So the first ingredient listed is the one present in the largest amount. Which ingredient in this feed was added in the largest amount? So let's try this out. In this slide, we were looking at five ingredients. Molasses products, grain products, plant protein products, salt, and vitamin A. At this point, it doesn't matter what these ingredients do for an animal. You just have to know that they exist, that each is present in the feed in a different amount, and all you have to do is place them in order from one to five based on their amounts. The ingredient added in the most will be first, the ingredient with the smallest amount will be last. Go ahead and rank order these feed ingredients in descending order by amount. The length of each bar represents the amount of each ingredient in the feed. Here's how your answer should look. Remember, the ingredients are listed by amount, starting with the most first. Like people, animals have different nutrition requirements depending on their age and activity. We know that younger people generally need and can effectively use more nutrients than older adults. Competing bodybuilders have different nutrient requirements than competing chess players. Likewise, growing horses generally need and can use more nutrients than older or mature horses. For example, a growing horse generally needs between 12 and 18% crude protein in its diet for proper growth and development. A mature horse will most likely do fine on a lower protein percentage, 
perhaps 8 to 12 percent, depending on their workload. Here's an open-ended question. Knowing that a mature horse will most likely do fine on a crude protein percentage of 8 to 12 percent, depending on its workload, would you consider buying a feed with a 13% crude protein for a mature horse? Why or why not? Here's another open-ended question. Knowing that a mature horse will most likely do fine on a crude protein percentage of 8 to 12%, depending on its workload, would you buy feed with a guaranteed analysis of 12% crude protein for a mare with a foal? Why or why not? Well, would you consider buying a feed with a guaranteed analysis of 12% if you were feeding a mare with a foal? Okay, it's a trick question. By looking at the guaranteed analysis only, you don't have enough information to make an informed decision about feed for a mare with a foal. Remember, it's just one piece of the puzzle. To make the best decision, you would look at the other information on the label, like the label's stated purpose. This feed's purpose is for the maintenance of horses. It does not mention mares or foals. Maybe you should consider a different feed that specifically mentions mares or foals. This feed is for mares with foals. Maybe this is the better feed to buy for mamas with babies. Why are there so many maybes? Animal nutrition is important and it can be complex. Large animals, whether livestock or horses, have several life stages and they serve many purposes. Also, many, perhaps most livestock and horses eat food other than commercial feed. Think about pigs eating acorns, goats eating hay, or sheep grazing in a field. Commercial feed is one part of an animal's daily food intake and its nutrients should be balanced with the nutrients of those other food sources. This is the last instructional content slide in this portion of an introduction to commercial feed labels. The references below were read or reviewed during the development of this program.